shooters, shmups, STGs, or STDs depending on which arcade you went into as a teenager, you can call them anything you want. I like to call them heaven or hell depending on how difficult they are. The Nintendo Switch has become something of a safe haven, a gathering point for the greatest shooters in history to come together to create the ultimate console for getting bullet held into smashing your overpriced Joy-Con into your grand's vase. This video is for those who are Nintendo Switch collectors, those who want physical releases of all their rage inducing 1C attempts. They are called essential because they're essential if you're a collector. Let's get that straight. This is pretty much every physical shooter on the system. It might not be definitive since, you know, it can be easy to miss one or two, but it is damn close. And I'll be sure to update this list in a year or two when there are even more delicious shooters on the market. Let's jump in. Cinemora EX was one of the very earliest shmup physicals, in fact I think it was the first, and it was the first for quite a long time. It was during that early period where publishers were a bit reluctant to risk a physical, and also Nintendo was quite selective of which games got on the Switch. But THQ, ever the bastion of making physicals, they were the first to do it. This mixes a decent shooter in with actual storytelling, which I have rarely found works well in the genre, but this one is decently regarded. Dimension Drive is a brain-melting shooter that has you looking at two planes of existence at once, each with subtle differences. This has you warping between the two in order to solve puzzles and also just avoid getting obliterated. I remember reviewing this a long time ago and while I could see the merit in it, it made me kind of nauseous. This was a Play Asia exclusive. Cyvaria Delta is an often forgotten about shooter on the Switch. It was another early one with the caveat of this being released in North America by Dispatch Games, widely considered to be the dumpster fire of all dumpster fire publishers. Luckily this one actually got out and breathed some air. Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha and Bravo are two double packs, the western releases of the Psycho's classic shooters. Together, you have 12 games over two volumes, and these are like the quintessential arcade shooters. You think of 90s arcade shooter, and you'll imagine something like this. Ranging from the Striker series to Gunbird, Samurai Aces, lots of great stuff. Shooters you can finish in 10 minutes, but master in 10 years. RXN Raijin, another Play Age exclusive shooter. This one unfortunately has seen little in the way of being remembered because it sold out super fast and the digital release has been pulled from sale, so most people can't even play it these days. I am happy to have this one in my collection. Shikondo Soul Eater is one that kind of suffered from the same fate. This is a style over substance shooter, but it is great style. But yeah, this one also suffered from being recently delisted from the eShop, meaning the only way to play it is via the physical, which was a Play Asia exclusive, but instead of being sold out forever, they gave it one last reprint before the license ran out and it's still available, at least as of the making of this video. Speaking of which, if you want to purchase any of these physicals for your collection, then consider using the links below that help support this channel in a fantastic way. I haven't listed everyone for sale because that would be overkill and I don't think there'd be space in the description. But for those that are Western retail, I've put a link to Video Games Plus, who are a fantastic company with good Canadian pricing and free international shipping over 80 Canadian bucks. If they are imports, then check the Play Asia links. Since that can be a bit more dangerous, then I've linked those specifically and Play Asia have free shipping over 100 bucks, and you can get 5% off if you use my discount code SWTV23, which is good until the end of this year. If you're watching this in the future, then I'll update the description and pinned comment with the new discount code. Thank you for your support, I do greatly appreciate it. Steridon Binary Stars is one of my favorite shooters of all time, not only on the Switch, which is kind of weird to say since it's a roguelike shooter where each run is different, generated with a good few variables. Normally, I'm all about handcrafted design, but damn, they nailed the impact and badassery. The shaking screen, the metal music, the pixel explosions, it's borderline perfect, and it's the shooter I have played the most ever, I think. Endlessly replayable, it was released physically by Super Rare Games very early on, so yeah, it now commands quite a high price. Aces of the Luftwaffe Squadron Edition is a casual friendly shooter, which is another one where they tried to make things a bit more cinematic with the storyline, voiced characters, and four-player co-op. It's a really good time with plenty of content to keep you going. 
Darius Cosmic Collection Arcade includes four unique Darius games, but seven in total if you consider slight variants. This version was done by Strictly Limited in Europe, but also Japan as a retail title, and Darius Cosmic Collection Console includes the console versions of various early Darius games. Six unique games, but nine versions in total. It has Mega Drive, Master System, Super Nintendo, PC, engine releases. This was released physically by Strictly Limited Games. Unlike the arcade release, this was not released in Japan at retail, but was part of a quickly sold out super collector's edition that you can't really get these days. Darius Cosmic Revelations is a double pack of G Darius HD and Darius Burst Another Chronicle EX Plus. It was released at Strictly Limited Games, but when they decided their parent company needed more money, they actually released both of these games individually at retail, making this double pack slightly obsolete. Anyways, that's more Darius than anyone can handle, even I'm just confused by them. But, you know, they're a solid classic series, but I, I've never been a huge fan personally. G Darius is the one that I do actually play sometimes. Cosmo Dreamer and Like Dreamer Double D Collection is a double pack of Toho-like shooters with a pretty bad art style. I mean, we're all a fan of ridiculous boobs, no matter the age, gender, or sexual orientation. The universe aligns with stuff like that, but it kind of cheapens what are, in fact, really surprisingly solid shooters, like really good shooters. But I guess without this art style, no one would have paid attention, nor would Play Asia have had this as a physical release. So job done, I guess. It's an exclusive to Play Asia. There's a standard and collector's edition still available. Dan Maku Unlimited 3 was one of the early hardcore bullet hell shooters on the Switch. I know that because you could feel the excitement in the community when it was coming. This series was originally made with mobile in mind, but it still works excellently on the Switch. It was released by Limited Run in North America quite early on, so good luck finding a reasonably priced copy these days. R-Type Dimension EX was another early shooter physical, and one that made shooter fans fall in love with Strictly Limited games, before they felt like they were being used. Yeah, Strictly Limited games got their hands on this, and this is a remake of the original R-Type and R-Type 2. They can be played in their original art style, or can be switched on the fly to Plasticky 3D. It has extra modes, and is all round a nice package, even if it's still R-Type, which means it's quite hard. R-Type Final 2 is a sequel to what many consider to be the best R-Type game. That was on the PS2, and it had loads of content in terms of how many ships there were to unlock, and this kind of has the same impact. By which I mean, almost no one took notice when it released, but it's still loved, even if there's just a bit too much DLC for my liking. Just give me a full package, guys. It's a shooter. Don't nickel and dime me. And also in development is R-Type Final 3, but we don't know when that is due. Maybe not too long after this video goes out. Who knows? Caladrius Blaze is a really good shooter and often the first stop on the import train. Yes, it's an import exclusive and it's often the cheapest one available, so most people pick it up because it's actually really good too. This one does have a bit of sauciness about it as your clothes get ripped off the more you get hit. That sounds like a reward, not a punishment. ESP Raditai is often considered one of the greatest shooters that's currently available on the Switch. It's also one of the most expensive. This is one of Cave's earlier titles from 1998, and it holds up very well to this day. M2 did a great job putting this into a full package on the Switch, and it's only available physically in Japan. There is no English on the cartridge, but it is still very playable without. The only hurdle is your wallet. Ghost Blade HD is a really great modern bullet hell shooter. This is a Play Asia exclusive release and is one of the more popular imports due to its affordability compared to some others in this video. If you're importing Switch games, then this is a solid one to get as it gets everything just about right. It doesn't massively set itself apart from others, but it's a good indie bullet hell time. Space Blaze is, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, probably the worst shooter on the Switch that has a physical release. Well, maybe not, but we'll get into that later. I don't know this for sure, I haven't played it, but the trailer is telling me this is a game that is still painfully in alpha development. You can't possibly get more generic. Thankfully, the physical isn't easy to come by. Last time I checked, it was mildly rare and only available in some places in Europe. 
The Sara collection may sound like something a middle class lady might be interested in adding to her wardrobe, but no, it's not an Italian fashion brand, it's a triple pack of games. It contains the Sara 1 and 2, and also includes a brand new game called Timeless Mode, which is widescreen, fully 3D, and a completely different beast to the original too. So the package has a lot going for it. This was released physically by Strictly Limited Games in Europe. Graceful Explosion Machine is one from Super Rare. They don't do many shooters because they prefer more artsy fartsy indie games, but when they do, they often choose wisely. Often shortened to gem, this isn't really a standard arcade shooter, even if it does play a bit like Defender. It has 30 levels as you blast and dodge the enemies in a very striking visual art style. Shmup Collection is a really sweet collection of three shooters made by a small team, each of which plays quite differently from each other, and it kind of feels like they're struggling to find their identity, but spoiler alert, they are actually really, really nice. In this package, you get Wolf Flame, you get Armed 7 DX, and Cetasius Next. All of them are surprisingly really good. Freedom Finger is another game that was released by Super Rare Games. This is a crazy humor-filled shooter that's more about the lols than the high score. You're a flying middle finger shooting and punching things. It's ridiculous and of course a bit of a joke but it is still fun to play. Ikaruga is widely considered to be one of the greatest shooters of all time. While it wasn't the first to pioneer the polarity mechanic, it was one that popularized it and influenced games even outside its genre. It only released physically in North America via Nicholas and in Japan. Neither are particularly easy to get a hold of, which is a big shame. Sisters Royale is another one that Strictly Limited did in Europe. I almost pulled the trigger on this one since it looks pretty good. It's got the style I generally enjoy, but I listened to true fans who told me it was only just decent, nothing truly special. Which, you know, fair enough. But I'm sure if this was a retail, I'd have picked it up for a cheaper price. But no, the prices are huge due to limited guffage. Blackbird is one of my favorite shooters of all time, and it's a game that I've barely scratched the surface on. I don't know what the hell is going on with this game, but I can't help but utterly adore the style. It helps that I like the developer, who've got an eye for both style and substance, and if you played Defender before, it's quite like that, but enhanced with its own flavor. Sadly, this was by a limited run game, so it's not particularly convenient to get a hold of for an acceptable price these days. Kyogeki Quartet Fighters is an import exclusive shooter. It does not have English, but that's not too important. This is going for the NES look, which I feel wasn't exactly known for its shmups aside from like a handful of decent ones, but it's cool nonetheless. It also has a focus on multiplayer, hence why it's called Quartet Fighters. This was done physically by B-Side Games in Japan, who have sadly closed doors since, so you'll be off to eBay to find this one. Waifu Uncovered and Waifu Discovered 2 Medieval Fantasy are two incredibly cultural shooters. In fact, that's the only thing they've got going for them. Do you enjoy banal, thoughtless shooter content? Well, these have got you covered. Well, maybe uncovered. I've only played the first one, maybe the second is a masterpiece for all I know, but the physical version has exclusive nude, like fully nude content, different to the digital release. So yeah, that is the selling point, which I would understand if they were actually drawn well, but they're not. These were only released physically in Europe because we're filthy. Macross Shooting Insight is an upcoming shooter for early 2024. I don't know much about Macross, I know even less about this game since the trailer is about 5 seconds long, but Tokyo Game Show had some footage and it's got endless anime characters talking over side-scrolling goodness. And yeah, it does look quite good. At the time of writing this, only Japan is getting a physical release, so it's an import exclusive, we don't know if there's English. Power Rumi is a Play Asia exclusive, a really solid shooter that's taken inspiration from Ikaruga, which I just talked about in this video. Instead of being binary, however, this is trinary? Is that actually a word? I don't know. This has a unique neo-Aztec art style and was balls hard, as you can imagine. A Lest Collection was released physically only in Japan, and it does not have English. However, like most M2 Shot Triggers releases, I don't think it's entirely necessary. What you have in this collection is early Alest games from the 8-bit era. Yeah, they're not going for the well-known 16-bit stuff yet because M2, you know, they like more obscure things. But they even made a brand new game in the series from scratch, and it's supposed to be fantastic. Remarkably, there are quite a lot of cotton games on the Switch. 
I find that bizarre that, you know, this once super niche series that only the most hardcore of import gamers knew about is now almost oversaturated on the system. I am not complaining though. Firstly, there's Cotton Reboot. Then there's Cotton 2 and Boomerang, which appear in the Saturn Tribute Package. There's Panorama Cotton and Cotton 100%, which were physical from Strictly Limited Games, but bundled together nicely in Japan. There's Cotton Fantasy, which is also known as Cotton Rock and Roll in Japan, which is a much better name. And in 2024, there is going to be a remake of Rainbow Cotton, which is a bad game, but with fixable issues. Let's hope they fix them, yeah? Trigger Heart X a Licker. Uh, I'm not sure why you would want to lick your ex, but hey, Trigger on the Heart seems appropriate after a breakup. This was originally a Dreamcast game, but it's releasing physically on the Nintendo Switch this December. And I am quite excited since it looks as though I can add it to my Dreamcast adventure. Well, maybe we'll have to see. Rolling Gunner plus Overpower was released physically by Strictly Limited Games in Europe, but it's also available in a nice Japanese package. Whichever one you picked up, you're getting a great time from a developer who knows what they're talking about. Are you enjoying this video? Well, if you are, do me a favor and leave a thumbs up. That always helps out. And if you want to support the channel outside of purchasing with the links below, then how about my Patreon? You get loads of stuff in return for quite a cheap price. You get all my videos early, all of them ad free. You get behind the scenes videos, access to a secret discord for smaller updates. You can vote. You even get exclusive bonus videos for each long retrospective that I make. And it is a fantastic way to support me. Check the links below if you fancy that, or just go there, have a look, see if anything takes your fancy. Ryzeon EX was released physically by NG Dev Direct, who really liked to go direct. Despite just being pretty much one bloke in his apartment, he's somehow putting out these physical releases himself. At least that's what I like to imagine. I was pretty cheesed off that I missed this one back in the day since it sold out super fast. No doubt mostly due to scalpers rather than people who want to play the damn game. Originally it was supposed to be physical only, but did eventually release digitally, which is good because that annoyed me. Gunvane is a recent physical pre-order from the same company, NG Dev Direct. However, the initial batch has already been sold out, but more will be coming in January. So collectors keep an alarm ready, and Gunvane is almost the quintessential modern bullet hell shooter. I mean, just look at it. It wants to make your eyes bleed and your senses explode, and it's pretty good. Rival Megagun is one of two shooters that First Press Games have done, which while they are a company that do like taking half a decade to send out their games, this one has broken through and escaped into people's hands. Yes, it is real, they delivered it. I love the chunky pixel work on this, and its unique feature is playing alongside another pilot who you can also attack, like a proper competitor would do. Why don't they do that at the 100 meter sprint? Tell you, I would watch way more athletics if the pole vaulter could you know, skewer his opponent, that would be nice. Crimson Clover World Explosion, does this exist? Who knows? First press games are doing their usual take the money and then deliver three years later routine. Yes, they deliver, but oh my god, please speed things up. I know people were very excited for this one. Big bullets, big numbers. It reminds me a lot of Gunvane, which I just talked about. I just hope that it does end up in your post box one day in the near future. Abarembo Tengu and Zombie Nation is a double pack of essentially the same game. Abarembo Tengu and its palette swap, Zombie Nation. They were NES slash Famicom games, which were super unique for the time. A floating head going through destroying stuff, good fun, even today I would say. This was done by Strictly Limited Games in Europe, but if you missed that, there was also a Japanese version available. Illmatic Envelope Swamp plus Radergi Swag is a double pack that was released physically in Japan. Sadly, there is no English. While normally I would say that's not important for a shooter, there is way more text in here than normal. And Illmatic Envelope Swamp especially is a bit of a maze in terms of making your way through the game. The flow is completely different, but you know, with Google Translate on hand, it's not too bad. Either way, these are two of the weirdest but most enjoyable shooters on the market. Radergi 2 is an upcoming Switch shooter, obviously a sequel to the game found in that double pack that I just talked about. There's still a long while before we see exactly how this one turns out, but you can probably expect more of the same weirdness and maybe some reliance on reading some stuff. Yes, it's currently unknown whether this has English or not, but it is currently only releasing physically in Japan. 
Griffin Knight Epic was a game released physically by Strictly Limited Games, and it was one of their fastest selling games ever, since there were only like 3,000 copies and no overpriced collector's editions. Maybe they should do that more often. Their finances might have been doing much better by now. But I digress because this is considered a bit of an idiosyncratic shooter. It has a medieval setting and kind of like adventure, like a Mega Man like structure, obtaining the boss's attacks after defeating them. So, really interesting. Death Smiles 1 and 2 is a double pack of two side scrolling cave shooters, although it's technically 3 and 1, I believe, since it also includes the black label version of the first game. This is visually one of my favourite cave shooters, purely down to the aesthetic. It gives me a similar feeling to Cotton, which can only be a good thing, and this was released physically worldwide, surprisingly. Stormwind EX. Uh, was released physically by Pixel of Games in Europe. It was originally a homebrew Dreamcast game, but made its way to modern systems in its EX fashion. While primarily a side-scrolling shooter, it also includes vertical sections as well. And I love the pre-rendered visuals. Like, if it's in the wrong hands, that can look tacky, but here they look great. Very nice looking game. Star Hunter DX and Space Moth Luna Edition is a double pack of shooters released physically by Strictly Limited Games. Once again, they love their shooters. Two games in one, both of which offer something different. You have your side scroller and a horizontal one. Both from the same developer who one would assume know what they're doing. I mean, you can't call yourself 1cc games without being good at making shooters. And thankfully, both of these are considered fairly good. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, Sakuretsu Chorogon Breath is a shooter I really enjoy despite everything going against it, mainly its name, and despite my jokes about preferring cultured games, it's rarely an aspect that enhances the gameplay, in fact developers often forget everything else, but here you still have a really fun shooter even if it looks like a dog's dinner. It gives you good incentive to play through multiple times and I did enjoy it. Andro Dunos 2 is a sequel to a Neo Geo shooter that no one remembers, at least not me, because I didn't really know what a Neo Geo was until I jumped on the internet last year. But that was always a solid time, and this sequel does do it justice. And, you know, quite solid. Nothing remarkable, but worth having in your collection. Rigid Force Redux is a charming little side-scrolling shooter. This one is obviously heavily inspired by R-Type, which gives a tinge of the generics, but one would say it's one of the more accessible games on this list with tight controls and not painfully difficult. This is one of a very few select games released physically by Game Fairy, who, after just a handful of releases, pretty much gave up. Hisho Same 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 is a pack of old NES ROMs essentially of fire, sky, flying shot, you know, those sort of things. But as it's a package from M2, you know it's been lovingly put together with loads of versions of the same games. It doesn't officially have English, but obviously some of the ROMs like the NES versions do have English. But you know, I mean, it's shooters. You don't need English anyway. Yurukil, the culmination games, has the honor of being the only shooter on this list that is half shmup, half visual novel. Oh yeah, pretty interesting combination that doesn't always work because have you ever met a dude who loves both VNs and shooters? Yes, they do exist, but not many of them. So it can be a test of patience for those who aren't in love with like both genres. Horihu and Friends is a cute em up with a lovely little dog as a fighter pilot of what looks like a World War I plane. This is a pricey one, all things considered, but it's best played with two people as you shoot things together. Or you can control two pilots at the same time, that's insane! Mushihime Sama is as hard to play as it is to pronounce. Of all the cave shooters, this is also another one that really appeals to me more so than some others due to the art style and theme. If A Bug's Life was a bullet hell shooter, it would probably look like this and would be a much better movie for it. This was released physically by Limited Run Games, sadly. Demon Throttle is a physical only shooter, of sorts at least. This never released digitally for purposes of a vomit inducing marketing scheme, and it sadly paid off. This physical version sold well because of them threatening people, there would be no other way to buy it. I missed out because I wasn't standing for that nonsense, but apparently the game is quite decent despite looking like it should be on the Action 52 cartridge. Bullet Souls Double Pack contains Bullet Soul and Bullet Soul Infinite Burst, two arcade shooters. This is from Majors, who I personally don't associate with shooters, but here we are. And these are two pretty well-loved shooters. A nice mix of old school and modern bullet hell, which is not surprising considering they were made in 2011. So yeah, they are old, but not old enough to drink. It's a nice mix. 
Soul Cresta Dramatic Edition was a super surprise resuscitation of the Cresta series, ancient shooters your granddad used to play, and it started out pretty much as an April Fool's joke from Platinum Games, but they did eventually make it, and from what I've heard it's alright, maybe not as amazing as some had hoped due to Platinum's involvement, but you know, solid enough. This was released in North America via Limited Run Games, and in Japan by their counterpart Super Deluxe. Akai Katana Shin was originally an import exclusive shooter, but about a year later Limited Run came in to no one's rescue and published it in North America. Europe got a retail release. This is a side-scrolling cave shooter with a couple of variations on that game within. Softstar, fantastic modern shooter made by an indie team, a team who obviously knows what makes the genre so enjoyable. The stage is well crafted, but for me it's about the variety of ships available. Each play very differently, but equally enjoyable. The visuals are good, and I highly recommend this one. It has a decent challenge to it for hardcore fans, but also accessible for casual players as well. Raiden 30th Anniversary includes Raiden 4 and 5, both of which are pretty good shooters. I played them a little bit and while I don't overtly love them, or nor do I see myself coming back to them time and time again, other shooter fans swear by them. You can buy them individually physically or you can buy them in a double pack which was released in Asia and via limited run. Raiden 3 Cross Maniacs is released a little bit later than the other two, it's kind of like they're going backwards, but from what I've heard, this is considered to be the best of the bunch of them, and of course it's not quite the original release, there is some remix magic going on in here too. Never Awake, in my opinion, is a fantastic shooter because not only is it good, but it's also a game anyone can play without much worry about skill. Sure, you do need to be good to complete it, but it lacks the demand of hardcore arcade shmups. There's loads of content, loads of levels and variety, locations, and amazing twisted nightmarish art style, gruesome boss fights. This game has it all. Perhaps those who are hardcore may not enjoy it as much because even though it has a great scoring system, it is really weird, not your usual type. But yeah, this release physically in Japan only and is a great time, one certainly worth importing. Super Hydora was released in Europe via Abbey Light's website and limited runs in North America. This uh, is a game that wears its heart on its sleeve. I mean, I just saw one screenshot for like half a millisecond and shouted out, Gradius! which made my daughter look at me funny. But you know what isn't funny, this game? Well, I don't know, maybe it is funny. Annoyingly, this came in a forced collector's edition to jack up the price. Every game needs a standard edition for us prudent peasants, okay? Please don't have a forced collector's edition. Ray's Arcade Chronology is a retro pack done by Strictly Limited in Europe, but also saw a watered down release at retail. Forget that absolute nonsense though. Just buy the Japanese one. It has English and uh, yeah, contains some amazing games. Ray Force, Ray Storm, Ray Storm Neo HD, Ray Crisis, Ray Crisis HD, amazing 32-bit style shooters. We need more of those, please. Crisis Wing is a game published physically by VGNY. It's a vertical shooter inspired by the 90s arcades, and I love the colors used in here. And yes, I am shallow. The visuals should be the last care of a shmup fan's mind, but I'm a filthy casual, so this appeals to me. Thankfully, most people seem to think the gameplay is great too. It's inspired by Toplan, so a little bit of Truxton in here as well, just to get the saliva flowing in your gob. Drainus may have the most unappealing name one could make up. There was definitely someone not willing to break it to the dev team that it doesn't sound so great in English, but forget that because you got a really brilliant side-scrolling shooter that mixes modern with old school really well. It plays brilliantly and is one of the better modern shooters available. It was released in Europe by Strictly Limited Games, but if you missed that, then Japan has got you covered with a very affordable retail release. Castle of Shikigami 2 is an old school shooter from the PS2 era and is more known for its originally terrible localization. However, for this modern port, all of that has been gutted out and changed to something one would find acceptable. But uh, I guess half the charm is gone. Never mind though, because it's a fun shooter with lots of character variety. This is available in Japan right now physically, but is coming westwards in the near future. Esp Galuda 2 is one of the premier shooters on the Switch, yet another cave classic given the go on the Nintendo Switch. Set in a good old post-apocalyptic world, this one back in the day was more welcoming on the fingers since it had a rapid fire by default, not on the whim of the greedy arcade owner who preferred coins to crippled fingers. Limited Run did this in North America, but there was a Japanese version also available via Super Deluxe. 
Stella Interface is a game made physically by VGNY, it's a side-scrolling one and it reminds me quite a lot of Steriden, and not only in the visual presentation but it turns out it's a roguelike as well which adds longevity to the genre and something different to keep replaying. I haven't played this one as of yet but it's now on my list and it looks like it could be a good one if it's half as good as Steriden. I love Steriden! Skyracket is not exactly a pure shoot 'em up, but in fact is a mix of shooter and block breaker. You know, like Arkanoid or Kirby's Block Ball, if you watch my giant Kirby retrospective. It is a fun, colourful game with a couple of characters and power ups, not one to take too seriously. It was released physically by One Print Games on their website, and they also had a version on Play Asia. Dodon Party Resurrection is one of two Dodon Party physical games on the Switch. This one was released physically by Limited Run in North America, but also got a Japanese release. This is one of my favourite shooters, especially from Cave, highly recommended. I just wish it had a wider physical release, it deserves it. Dodon Party Blissful Death Reincarnation is an upcoming Dodon Party release. This is a different game to Resurrection, an earlier one in the series all the way back in 2002. This is one I've got on my phone and I love blasting it out when I feel like burning my battery. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this on the Switch. Currently, it's only going to be available physically in Japan that we know of. We don't know anything about English, but who needs it? Batsugun Saturn Tribute Boosted is what many consider to be the granddaddy of Danmaku or Bullet Hell from 1993. Wow, this was from Toa Plan and it was their last one, which is one hell of a mark to make with your final shooter. This is obviously based on the Saturn version, hence the name which includes some changes and additions which are always welcome. You can get this in Japan, but I believe it's also getting a Western release. Telenet Shooting Collection has a Japanese physical release and not long ago was put up for pre-order at Limited Run Games, which is the one that will have English. This is a small collection of Granada, Avenger, Gyarus and Psychic Storm. I wouldn't say any of these are essential, not mind-blowing schmutz, but still a decent enough package. Trouble Witcher's final episode 1, Daughters of Amalgam, is an import exclusive shooter. This was only available in Japan and I haven't had the time to play this one yet because the physical is surprisingly difficult to get a hold of, seems like they didn't print a lot of them. This is a chaotic side scroller that originally appeared on the 360, looks amazing and Steam reviews say it's pretty good, just need to wait for more to be available. Zero Fire is one of the latest collections from M2. Yeah, they've been the bastions of old school shooters barely anyone cares about, but we're glad regardless. They've done a good job and this package contains Zero Wing and Hellfire, the former of which has a rather popular meme that somehow came into existence. That, 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 that's an overrated meme by the way, just putting that out there. As the others, it doesn't have English with the Japanese release, but that's not important. Hyper Sentinel is a shooter that was released physically by VGNY who are different to VGP, yeah? Too many VGs in the world. This is a game that was heavily inspired by an old ass game called, I think it was called Iridium. Uh, too old for me, but that's enough of a word to tickle the gentlemen of a certain age politely in the balls to wake them up with excitement. It's a pretty full on game, really good if your eyeballs can take it. Overdriven Evolution, another game from VGNY. Visually, this one is nowhere near as impressive as some others out there. In fact, personally speaking, it looks a bit amateurish in that aspect, but the gameplay is very solid, which is a shame that this has flew under the radar. Like, no one has reviewed this game at all, aside from, like, one shooter fan who said it's pretty decent. Devil Engine is a fantastic horizontal shooter that's available physically in Japan with 32-bit style visuals which I love. This is a pretty packed game with lots of modes and unlocks to keep you going. It's like a Sega Saturn shooter was unearthed from an archaeological dig and has seen the light of day for the first time. Definitely import this physical release when it releases like, well probably now. Steel Empire Chronicles has been put up for pre-order at Strictly Limited Games which includes a remake of Steel Empire, uh, the Game Boy Advance version, the Mega Drive version as well as Over Horizon which they found down the back of the sofa and declared they can use it to add 5 quid onto the price. This is still available for pre-order now at Strictly Limited but due to them having a poisonous sister company called In In Games this is getting a watered down retail version that won't include the extra game. Jamestown Plus is a four player vertical shooter which the theme sells it alone. Listen to this, okay? A 17th century British colony on Mars. Oh yes, this is a bit of an underrated gem. Maybe hardcore enthusiasts didn't give it much attention, maybe just the multiplayer fun that it brings. But don't worry, if you give it a chance and play it by yourself, you'll find a great shooter that is hard to master. 
Radiant Silvergun is an absolutely classic shmup, originally on a Saturn before making its way to more modern consoles, and physically on the Nintendo Switch. Sadly, despite being a game that no doubt would have had a lot of interest if it was more liberally available, it was released in limited numbers by Limited Run Games, so there's no real way to buy it direct right now. This was by Treasure before they did their seminal Ikaruga, who many feel this game is almost equal of it. I mean, you know, on the Saturn, Despite the wealth of options, Radiant Silvergun is considered the pinnacle. Toa Plan Arcade Garage Kyoko Yoko Tiger Heli is an M2 package, once again, old school NES ROMs that most people don't care about, but we're happy they're here. Well, arcade, PC Engine, Mega Drive as well, can't forget those. Again, it does not have English officially, but it's not entirely necessary. And also, rather randomly, Limited Room Games also took pre-orders for this in North America not so long ago. So yeah, that's an option too. Irem Collection 1-5 to are game physicals that are currently in production. Three of them are known as of now, and they include retro titles from Irem's library, which, as you can probably guess, most of them are shooters. These have been done by Strictly Limited in Europe, while Japan also looks to be doing them as well, since Volume 1 pre-orders went live for that just recently. Air Twister isn't your normal kind of shooter, it's a rail shooter like Space Harrier, Star Fox, and this one was directed by Yu Suzuki as he no doubt tries to gather more funds for the next Shenmue game. I played this briefly on Apple Arcade since it's not out on the Switch as of writing and recording this, but it will be probably by the time it's edited together, and the game seemed interesting, but the music... Well, let's just say someone is a fan of the rock band Queen and decided it would be appropriate for a game like this. Hint, it is not. Game was fun though, releasing in November, probably out already. Earth Atlantis is not your typical shooter since it's heavily exploration based, probably more for people who don't play shmups, and to be honest, it's not the greatest game ever despite the absolute style that it's rocking. This was a physical via VGNY. And there we have it, maybe not every physical shooter on the Switch, but close enough. Let me know if I accidentally miss one, two or three, and I'll be sure to update this video in a year or two's time once the Switch is buried in its grave and there's no more available. What is your favourite shooter on the Switch? Please let me know. You may also want to support me by using the purchase links either from VGP or PlayAsia, both great companies that have made YouTube viable for me as a part-time job. Well, actually, it's entirely thanks to you. You're the one buying it. And of course, my Patreon supporters, who I thank greatly, they get loads of bonus stuff, including these videos early, ad-free and stuff like that. And I need to give a big shout-out to my super producers. Alexander Cato, Brent McLean, Jcrod7776, they, Sven Nowlitz, Wixit, Josh Foote, and Dustin Martin.